Hey everybody, welcome to this uh, interview. I, I've been really excited about having this interview with one of my favorite clients. I mean, I'm here with Daisha Gardner and we're here today to share some major topics that are getting a lot of controversy to be honest with you. Uh, one is Leading California, which by the way, I am the National Relocation Director for Leading California and Life After California Facebook groups. If you have an interest of leaving California, you really need to check out those Facebook groups. And so my client, Daisha, has actually uh, left California and here she is in Las Vegas. So I'm super excited. And I'm gonna be honest, and Daisha is going to share a little bit with you some of the challenges that we had. And uh, I believe we did 15 different submissions. On Approximately, 15 yes, yeah, so we did. 15, 15 different <laughs> homes. And so we're gonna talk about leaving California, coming to Southern Nevada. This is my home state. I've been here my whole life. I love Nevada. It's a great town. By the way, we just got the Oakland A's, which is really cool. So now we have baseball, we got football, we have hockey. Our nights are really doing well right now. Um, so we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about the rent to own program and we're gonna talk about some challenges and some things that you experienced. Yes. And then of course, we're gonna just talk in general about what her experience was using me as her realtor and this whole process. So why don't you uh, let everybody know who you are and a little bit about yourself. Well, as David said, I'm Daisha Gardner. I'm from Northern California and um, just recently relocated to Nevada, uh, what, two two months ago? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I'm excited to be here and I'm grateful for David and- Thank you so much, yeah. I really appreciate it. I think our process, you were actually my longest client oh. and the most challenging client, but it wasn't because of you, it was because of the home partner process. Right. And we'll get into that a little bit, but I think we went about four months mm -hmm. for us to finally win a house and, uh, I don't know if most of you probably know that I'm a martial art instructor. I taught martial arts for 35 years and uh, I've been retired for four years. And uh, it's interesting because in martial arts, we have a saying, never give up. And so, I mean, perseverance, we, we prevailed. Yeah. And there were a few times I got to be honest, I thought Daisha was going to be like, you know what, I'm just going to get a regular <laughs> rental. But she really wanted to have something that she could buy. Yes. And she fell in love with this house that we're sitting in right now. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and dive in a little bit and talk about the experience and the ups and the downs of it. So um, for somebody that was thinking about doing a rent to own program, mm -hmm. if you were going to talk about the process of putting in your application, I know it was a while back, but maybe you could share what that was like. Was it a challenge? Were they over requiring you and you had to put in different documents or was it a pretty simple process? I mean, I think ideally it was supposed to be a simple process, approximately like three days. So it was supposed to be a really quick turnaround. Right. Um, in my instance, because I wasn't working at the time, I uh -huh. think that proposed a bit of a challenge, which was kind of new for you right. and maybe yeah. for home partners as well, right? Yeah, so yeah. Um, so in that case, I had to produce a little bit more documentation. Right. So that made it a yeah. little bit more challenging and caused a little bit more delays right. than normal. Yeah, yeah and uh, Daisha did have a, a, was it a disability or? Yes. So she was on disability and I wasn't even really sure if that income verification would be able to make her qualify, right. which we both talked about. And then we got customer service on the phone quite a few times yes. and they actually approved her. Yes. And here we are sitting in, a, in her rent to own home, which is so awesome. And she really loves this house. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit more about, we have to talk about our challenges. Yes. And boy, there were a lot. So we actually submitted a house on home field. I'll never forget this. So we submitted a house and I remember one of my favorite phrases is when I call my client up and I say, congratulations, <laughs> you, you just got approved. And I've had clients with their kids in the background screaming, jumping up and down. I've done it on Facebook. Yes. And it is a very, very exciting thing right. to be able to say congratulations. So during the process, I say, congratulations, you were approved. Right. I say, congratulations, we just won the house. Yes. Congratulations, you're going to be moving in. Well, in this particular instance, I said, congratulations. They did the inspection. They came back the inspection and said there was going to be $35,000 because there was mold underneath the sink that we had missed. And I remember saying to you, you were like, I'm not moving into that house. Right. It has mold. Yes. 
So we ended up losing that house and we knew that it was challenging to get into a house uh, because home partners had kind of slowed down on buying yes. and they were being a little more aggressive with their offers. Like they weren't coming in at list price. Right. Can you share a little bit of that experience? Oh, that probably? was, it was pretty horrific <laughs> to say the least. Right. Um, uh, it was a beautiful three story home. Mm -hmm. I'm not too far from, from where I am now. Right. Um, and you know, we were excited, you know, the yeah. video, the congratulations and all that was, it was surreal. Yeah, right. Um, and, uh, you know, I think what was challenging for me was the fact that they approve you and then they do the inspection later. Right. And so you're, 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 you know, you're thinking you're gonna, you know, reside in this one particular home. And then later, you know, you find out you're, you're not. So I think actually that case, and I don't know if I shared this with you, David, prompted home partners to change their contract online oh, the wow. wording of because i remember it was like i felt like it was kind of like a breach of contract type of thing yes, yeah because i'd already signed the lease mm -hmm. i thought the home was mine but then of course there's mold so you and know, you'd already paid your security deposit. yeah i had done that as well <laughs> yeah, yes yeah so um so because of that they they changed the wording of like you know of how they do business or in the future yeah, yeah. they did um so but um it was a learning experience yeah. i think everything that we all the challenges we went through i think we both learned a lot yeah, yeah. and i think it'll much better prepare us both in the future you know well so. i don't know if you remember but i felt like i was with my daughter and she needed to get her oil changed and she had just bought her car and we were on the way and i had just gotten the call i swear i felt like i had been kicked being a martial art instructor <laughs> i felt like i had just gotten completely beat up my daughter was like, dad, what's wrong? I said, I don't know how I'm going to be able to tell Daisha that she's not getting the house. Right. After I had shared with her, congratulations, <laughs> you're getting the house. So yeah. we we ended up not even getting her oil changed. Oh, wow. we didn't even, I said, you know what, <laughs> you need to go. I right. need to figure this out. Mm -hmm. I was so passionate about getting your home for yes. you. And he was. I, I didn't know what to do. Right. I, and I was like, I don't know if we're going to be able to get one. Right. And I think I want to say we have submitted at least 10 more houses after that. Yes. And here we are at Viterbo. Yes. Uh, this is such a great house. I love this house. It's... This was a house that was, by the way, a single lady that lived here by herself. Mm -hmm. And she completely took care of this. So yes. I knew that we were going to pass the inspection. Okay. But we even had a challenge with that because the inspection, they came back and said, we want $6,000 in repair. I don't know if I shared that with you. Yes, for there was the air conditioner. Yeah. It was and, an older air conditioner, yeah. right? So we ended up working it all out and here we are. But um, other than the challenges, um, tell me what the process was like and um, what did it feel like when I was able to call you again and say congratulations? I think I was messing with you too. Yeah, you did. It, it was very exciting and uh, I couldn't believe it. I yeah. wasn't sure if this was for real this time, you know, like, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, like, so I, I couldn't be as excited as I wanted to be like the first time, Right. but right. I was like, ah, you know, kind of hesitant, but, uh -huh. um, but when you came and did the run through the, you know, the one final time, mm -hmm. and I think we passed all the inspections mm -hmm. and got through all yeah. of those hurdles. Yeah. Um, I was excited and I, I couldn't believe like, oh my God, this is really happening. Yeah. I know. Right. Yeah. It, it, and that's yeah. the thing about being a realtor. That, that's the passion. That's my love is to be able to convey that and to be able to do that with a client. There's nothing better. Because here she is, she, this poor woman is like, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to move to Vegas now. Right. And, you know, it had a few setbacks, but then to be able to share that. And uh, I did a video with Zayisha when she actually got here and I handed <laughs> her the keys, which I, I, I was definitely doing that with her. And that was really, really cool. Yes. Well, so so overall, there were yes. some challenges. Yes. If you were going to share anything with a future client of mm -hmm. Home Partners and you were going to tell them what they have to look forward to. And by the way, they may change their structure and it may get to be easier, but right now it is challenging. We agree. Right. What would you say to them? I mean, I'd say, I think it's an opportunity of a lifetime, to be honest. And, um, and I believe that miracles do come true. <laughs> yes, they do. Um, yeah. You know, someone with a middle class income can actually really possibly afford a home mm -hmm. and with the opportunity to 
purchase that home within the, you know, the first year through the fifth year. I think that's pretty amazing that you have that, As you know, option, that large, yeah. you know, amount of time to decide mm -hmm. and or to rent, you know, in a stable, consistent environment, right. you know, yeah. without being forced to move. You know, as you know, that's often the case when you rent mm -hmm. a home. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I love how they put you in the bracket, you know, of what you can afford, you know, yeah. income brackets and, and things like that. And they have actually a program for uh, lower income individuals as well. Right, the choice right? program. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so I yes. think... Um, I think it's giving people, middle class, lower to middle class people, the opportunity to uh, have, you know, the dreams, right. to have their dreams come true. Well, yeah. and, and I'd like to share with my clients and future clients that are maybe possibly watching this. Mm -hmm. I have three things that I tell people when they're considering doing a rental. Mm -hmm. Number one, you have five years to stay in the home. Yes. I believe that this is a huge feature. In this Las Vegas Valley, we have experienced anywhere between 10 and 50 percent rent increases. Right. This is one thing about home partners that's really amazing is they only do 3 percent rental increases each year. It's right. about $80 a month more in year two than it is in year one. Right. The fact that we're looking at homes like this mm -hmm. that are for sale as opposed to homes that are for rent is the second thing that I always tell people is important. And then number three, um, you have the option to buy. Yes. People get really freaked out. You know, they think, oh my gosh, I'm getting a rent to own home. What if I don't buy it? Right. Oh, what, what I'm in a rent to home and I uh, rent to own home. And I shared that with you. Yes. And I told you that if the numbers make sense, I'm going to buy it. Right. But right now the numbers don't make sense for me. Yeah. You got into a position where the numbers would definitely make more sense for you. Right. But having that option rather yeah. than having an obligation to buy yes. is really a big thing. And it's a it's a very nice feature that they have. Yeah, definitely. And knowing that you can just walk away. With no penalty. With no penalty. After your, the year, yeah. after the first year. Yeah. And you get yeah. your security deposit back. So okay, anyway, let's great. let's move on. I want, I want to start talking a little bit more about um, the leaving California yes. and coming to Las Vegas. So as the relocation director for Facebook groups, Leaving California and Life After California, yes. um, we have a ton of people that are on that site. Yeah. And they, I mean, they post all kinds of things like we're thinking of leaving, we're thinking about going to Nevada, we're thinking about going to Charleston, North Carolina, we're thinking about Miami. Right. Um, what would you say, what the experience has been like leaving California and getting out of that state? Let's talk a little bit about why you decided to leave. Well, I had been in my apartment for 17 years, same city, a, a small little city in the suburb in the Bay Area of, of California um, for 17 years. And I just wanted a change of environment. And I also wanted a three bedroom home. I was in a two bedroom apartment with my two kids and they were getting older sure, yeah. and they both needed their individual room. I wanted a backyard. I just wanted more space for sure, us yeah. to move around. And I just, I knew that I, there was no way in the world that I'd be able to afford a three bedroom home in the state of California. That is so sad. Uh, it was sad. <laughs> sad. I thought, oh my God, if I don't move now and, um, I'd be stuck in this two bedroom apartment for another 17 years, right, like, yeah. because, you know, yeah. and I had a couple of girlfriends who were from the Bay area as well. And they relocated to Nevada. Okay. And, um, they were like, you should move, you should move. And I was like, no, I'm pretty, you know, I, 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 I don't take risks and uh -huh. I, I, yeah. I, you know, I get very comfortable in my environment. And so I, it took me a couple of years and I really realized I was just like, you know, I got to get out of here. I need a change of environment. I just need, you know, what city and area was it? It was uh, Fremont, California. Okay. So it's uh, it's a suburb uh, close to San Jose, in between San Jose and Oakland. I lived in Monterey for about a year. Monterey so is beautiful. I'm familiar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Monterey yeah. was nice. Yes. But it's expensive. Very, yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 So here you are. You're in a three bedroom. Your kids yes. are happy. Your family's happy. Yes. Um, and you had reservations. What were some of the reservations of, you know, some people are thinking, you know, am I really going to leave this great state? And by the way, I have nothing bad to say about California, except for the politics and except for how much how expensive it is. Other than that, I, I visit California often. It's yes. a great state. It is it's a good place to visit now, but you just can't live there. No, you can't. afford. And that saying when people say, oh, it's a great place, but you just you wouldn't want to live there because it's too expensive. Right. Is so true. Um, right. What would you say to people about, you know, they're, they're really like stuck they're thinking about it? Um, I 
you know, this is the advice my girlfriend gave me that moved that moved out here before I did. She said, take a leap of faith, you mm-hmm, know, right. just do it. And I thought, just you know, like Nike, just yeah, do yeah it. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, you know, and she said she just did it and she was on disability, ironically, at okay. the same time. So I was like, well, if she can do it, right. I can do it. Yeah. Um, so what was your question? <laughs> What would you say to the people in California that are thinking, that are really kind of stuck? They're like, should I go? Should I stay? The one good thing I think about, that's great about the transition from California to Nevada is it's not that far. Nevada is not that far from California. It's like an hour and a half to 45 minute flight. Um, You could get some really cheap flights. You can drive back and forth if you want, if Mm -hmm. you like road trips and things of that nature. Um, so that's what I love is I'm not far from home, so to speak. Family, yeah. Yeah. That's a big and one. Yeah. It is. Because a lot of times people say they want to go to places in the South. Right. But then they're so far away from their family. Yeah. So I think Las Vegas is really a, uh, it's, uh, is a great alternative. It is. I do get some people that are on the side from leaving California, life after California. They say that Las Vegas is kind of like a mini California. I, we kind of feel that way. Do you? I, initially, when I came last summer, it was like, oh, you know, it's just kind of like... No, mini California in a bad way. Do oh, you, in a bad way? Like um, I think people are saying they don't like the traffic, that there's mm-hmm. a lot of traffic built up. But California is like that, too, mm-hmm. and LA's worse. Yeah. Um, I think in your neighborhoods, it's not that bad. I mean, if you go, of course, to the Strip and you're yeah. out on the town, sure. you may experience a bit of traffic. But, but if nothing you're like LA or not, not No, like no, it's yeah. not that bad. To yeah. me, it's not that bad. I'm yeah. like, you know, I, I you know, um, I, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a neutral place. It's a lot of diversity. Where I lived, it was, there was just, uh, it was 3% African-American and the rest were Asian. Really? Indi- wow. You know, Pakistan, yeah. Afghanistan, yeah. Indian, of probably, I don't know, 10% white, maybe a little bit more than I, I'm, I could be wrong about that. But what I love about Nevada is it's some of everybody mm-hmm. from all over the world. Yeah. And, and a lot of people are from California too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so, they are. Yeah. Well, we had 100,000 people leave. It, it, they didn't leave, excuse me. Yeah. We had 100,000 people come to Nevada last year. Right. 40,000 of them were from California. Yeah. So we're getting almost 50% of the people that relocate to our state right. are from California. Yeah. Now I'm going to look at my notes a little bit. I had a couple other things I wanted to just touch on. Sure. Um, now, how has the transition been from coming from California to coming to Las Vegas? It was pretty smooth. I mean, um, other than the U-Haul and, and, and hiring the movie, the movers and those prices being um, elevated. Yeah, I shared with yeah. you on that. I, yeah. I don't know if you guys know this or yeah. not, but U-Hauls from Los Angeles to Las Vegas are three times as much from Las Vegas to Los Angeles. Yeah. And nobody can find U-Haul trucks in yeah. California. Right. That's how many people. And I just saw the statistic. I don't know if you heard, but mm. last year there were 780,000 people left California. Really? 780,000. I believe you. I, it's like a mass exodus, I yeah. think. You know, yeah. either going to Nevada, Florida, yeah. or yeah. Texas. Yeah, yeah. You a lot know, of Texas people. Anywhere but California, yeah. 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 So, uh, like I said, everybody that I meet here is mm-hmm. from California. Yeah. I've met, pretty much every person I've met has been from California, ironically. Mm-hmm. So, um, but it, the, 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 the the relocation is expensive. So, I think you need to definitely plan and save for that. Mm-hmm. That, you know, they'll budget you, a little extra, right? But mm-hmm. definitely budget extra because yeah. they'll quote you, you know, low. Mm-hmm. And then when they get there, it's a whole nother double, triple rate. Sure. So, be prepared for that. <laughs> yes. Um, and then, you know, pack and label, mm-hmm. you know, label all of your, your, your boxes, right? Take notes and number them. I numbered them and I labeled them and I noted every yeah. box and what was in it. And I took pictures of everything mm-hmm. so that it made it easy to make sure that you had everything once you arrived at your location. Right. And then you, it was also easy for you to find the things that you were looking for as well. So that's, that's just a yeah. little tip that I would give. Yeah. That's great advice. Yes. All righty. Um, so. Let's talk about differences. I mean, we can't hide the fact that we are in a desert. Uh, yes, sorry. But, um, I have all these reminders. 
So let, let's talk. So next, what I'd like to do is I want to talk about the differences. And obviously, we can hide the fact that we are in a desert. Yes. And, um, you know, one of the things that I get from a lot of clients is mm-hmm. people will say things to me like, oh, my God, I'd never live in Vegas. Yeah. It's so hot. Right. But then I always come back and say, well, would you rather live in Michigan when it's minus 25 degrees? Right. Would you rather live in Seattle where it rains all the time? Yes. Would you rather live in Miami where it's humid like yeah. nine months out of the year? Mm-hmm. So we do have July and August are brutal. Right. But let's talk a little bit about the differences and what your thoughts are, you know, what you would share with somebody about these differences of being in a desert. Yeah. Um, ironically, I like it. I usually don't like hot. Mm-hmm. I'm from the Midwest originally where it does get really, really humid mm-hmm. and it's unbearable. I've been to... Um, different Atlanta and different places Mm -hmm. where the humidity level is extreme. And it's even Sacramento and California is pretty bad. I think it's worse than here. Yeah. The air is dry. So for me, it feels uh, more manageable, more doable. Um, And who's standing out in the hot heat anyway, either you're indoors, you're in your car, you're in the air conditioner Mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, but I, but I love the weather. I think it, it reminds me of Hawaii in a way for some reason. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just kind of like the still coolness right. sometimes. With the, and sometimes it's hot and there's a nice little breeze. And it's only really hot where the sun is just right. beaming down on you. So, you know, wear your protectants, get your umbrellas out, you sure. know. And um, But I love it. I love that we still have mountains. Like even it's, it's a desert. It's beautiful. There's yeah. mountains because California, there's mountains all around. And I love right. that. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, my God, Nevada has mountains, yeah. too. You yeah. know, so yeah. I love that. So yeah. it, it kind of reminds me, like you, like we mentioned before, like a mini California, but in a good way for me. Good. Yeah. Well, January, February, March, April. These are bonus months. I mean, right. the weather is fantastic. Yes. And then when we get into like late August, September, October, yeah. November, mm-hmm. we get six months out of the year where you can't beat the weather. Right. So you, by being here for the July, August, and I admit it, it's rough in yes. July and August. And w- by the way, when we're filming this, it is we are at the end of April. So mm-hmm. this is probably the best weather we have yes. and you haven't got to live through July and August. But yes. you're right. Most people do stay inside. Yes. Well, let's move on. Mm-hmm. Um, so what do you think, you know, if you were going to tell somebody, what do you think the biggest advantages are about being in our state? Definitely you get more house for your money here in the state of Nevada versus California. Yeah. Um, so I think that's an advantage. And also the advantage is there's a lot to do, you know, f- a lot. for adults and for families. Um, mm-hmm. We're, I'm, you know, I'm not too far. From, I'm like 15 minutes away from the strip, which is far enough, but still close enough to get you to find entertainment of all sorts. Absolutely. I mean, there's, you know, there's, well, it is the entertainment capital of the world. It is, but <laughs> yeah. there's a lot. I mean, yeah. we saw the Michael Jackson show. I took my kids. I love that he, show. My yeah. son loved it. He yeah. was inspired by it. Um, we went to the Coca Cola factory and the M M&M and M factory. I mean, there's just so much to do and a lot of great restaurants. I mean, there's I've Googled restaurants that I thought were only in like California, mm-hmm. yeah. and there's not one restaurant that I could find that was in California that was not here. In the state Did of you know that our city is actually? I think it was voted in the top ten of the best places in the world for dining. We have some yeah. of the best dining options in this city. So yeah, there is so much to do and. Yeah. Uh, it's just a great, great city. Yeah, I love it. Um, and then as far as advantages go, we don't have a state income tax. Right. So that really helps out yes. with a lot. And the cost of living here is a lot cheaper. Right. Um, and I think that the real estate prices are kind of leveling out a little okay. bit. Whereas in California, they're still going up. up. Yeah, they're yes. going up. So, yeah. um, well, let's see. So you did share that you had a chance to explore some some city surrounding places. Yes. I do have some hidden gems. Um, oh, yeah. There's a place called Nelson's Landing. It's beautiful. Okay. It's right on the Colorado River. Oh, yeah. um, they have like a gold mine you can check out. Okay. Uh, the Hoover Dam tour is really good. I heard about that. The Mob Museum. I did a video on the top ten attractions to see in Las okay. Vegas, but I try to share some you know some things that people don't know about that right. are pretty cool. Yeah. Is there anything else that you've got a chance to see? Uh, what else have I done? Well, because I have friends here and they have, you know, houses, my girlfriend has a pool and a hot tub. Mm, nice. yeah. So, you know, we just, even if you don't want to spend money and hopefully you have a friend with a pool and a hot tub, right. we could just go, you know, to her house and barbecue mm-hmm. and hang out all day. She has a TV out there and, you know, I mean, Perfect. it's just, yeah. 
Um, there's a, I, I mean, I just got here two months ago. Ton of stuff there's here. a lot to do yeah. still. Yeah. I'm excited about exploring mm. all the different mm. things. I, I love to do little short family hikes and, oh, yeah. and want to go to, you know, Arizona's an hour away. Like mm-hmm. I said, you know, yeah. Colorado's not too far. Sedona, I mean, Valley we're kind of, you know, just yeah. around, you know, yeah. a lot of great other, you know, attractions mm. and, and cities and states. So I, I I think I have a lifetime to Definitely. really explore yeah. all the different restaurants and shows yes. and hotels and you know we'll have to come um, back in a year and yeah you should yeah. yeah we'll do a follow up so and then we talked a little bit about the cost of living um, basically it's just a lot cheaper yes and this is one of the biggest reasons that people are leaving you know because of the politics because of the cost of living in California. I mean, they're, they're saying that there could be a year not that far away where there's over a million people leaving in a, in a 12 month period, which is crazy. It. So yeah, I can believe um, that. Let's see. Um, have you noticed any cultural differences in our state? I think you kind of shared that you were in a city where it was 90 percent Asian. Yes. And um, and this is just a very diverse melting pot. It is. I, I, I just love people in general. Honestly, right. I really do. And. It seems like everybody gets along and, you know, it doesn't really matter what your origin is. It doesn't matter what (laughs) who you are, your ethnicity and all that. No, it's true. I found everybody here to be nice. I think I've only encountered maybe one to two, like, difficult people. But for the most part, every single person I've encountered Mm -hmm. have been very nice opening doors. Oh, go first. I mean, they're not that nice in California. I thought Uh California was kind of very, you know, liberal and everybody was pretty cool and easygoing. But here, everybody, maybe it's because it's a customer service oriented state. I Could don't be. know. Yeah. But every single person, pretty for the most part, that mm-hmm. I've encountered has just been overly yeah. nice, overly helpful. And I'm just like, are these people real? You <laughs> yeah, know, so yeah. I, I've had a great experience with. Well, finally, I'd like to kind of wrap up. And uh, we really appreciate you guys listening to this story. Yes. And I believe that life is about stories. And our stories are great. I promise I'll never, ever forget you forever. <laughs> and some of this, the, the highs and the lows of yeah. it was really exciting. Yes. And and so let's kind of finish up because it, I really hear you saying that you've adopted this city and this is a place that you're going to stay. Do you have any intentions of, of, of leaving? Like this is this is it? Yeah, I think this is it for now for the yeah. foreseeable future. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I um, I really appreciate having the opportunity to work with you. I appreciate you being in our city now, and now you're a resident of Las Vegas, yes. and uh, it's just been a great experience. Yes. Um, and I look forward to being your friend and yes. and hanging out. So yes, welcome to Las Vegas. Thank you. And by the way, David is the best realtor. He is the thank you. He is so patient. He is diligent. He works nonstop for you. He was my biggest advocate between home partners and and the 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 sellers of the homes and and he was just such a gracious you know gentleman the whole time the ultimate professional the whole time and he has a wealth of knowledge and information about the you know the real estate industry as as a whole and about the state of nevada because this is where he's from and he was just so informative and i i just felt really comfortable working with him throughout the process it made it a lot easier to to make that type of transition especially mm-hmm. after being you know in another state for so long and yeah. kind of hesitant initially thank to, you so much yeah. i appreciate it yeah all right yes well thank you everybody for listening again I'm David Berry, the master of building dreams, and I have proof that I do build dreams and uh, I have a lot of perseverance. I will never give up. I always, always fight for my clients. And again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. And if you have any questions or if you want to just talk about real estate, I look forward to talking to you soon.